and that's our the ingenuities of Homo sapiens for the win. Uh, we, we figured out how this works, we understand that it does work and how it works, and we've been able to use it to our advantage. So most of the, the most common way we understand to use botulism toxin is by using the type A. There's multiple uh, different types of um, botulism neurotoxin. I believe it goes up to G or H. Um, but type A is um, a purified complex, very dilute, created by the allergen company. Um, and then this can be used for all sorts of um, uses. And back in the 70s, it was first used to help cure strabismus. And if you guys know, this is when one or both eyes sort of stray off. And that's because this muscle, maybe on this side here, is stronger than the muscle over here. So if there was a way to weaken this muscle and allow this muscle to strengthen, then maybe vision could be corrected. And that's exactly what they did. They knew that uh, the botulism neurotoxin causes muscles to relax. And so injecting it over here into this muscle um, allows this eye to straighten out. Very interesting. So even before they understood how the neurotoxin works, they just knew it worked and they were able to use it. So any type of disorder or disease where we have a spastic um, muscle contraction, spastic movements, um, we are able to use a botulism neurotoxin to um, ameliorate that and in this case this is a child with cerebral palsy but it can also be used for uh, multiple sclerosis and other disorders. Um, the temporal, temporal mandibular jo joint uh, sometimes is um, susceptible to extra tightening of the muscles here so the TMJ syndrome uh, where people have a lot of jaw and ear pain because of the muscles are really tight if we can relax those muscles a little bit um, then that would be very useful for these people and it turns out that uh, Botox is a wonderful way to do this. Uh, low back pain, often characterized by spasms of the muscle. If we can relax the spasms with the botulism toxin, um, then that's helpful as well. Migraines is another place that this is used. Now, uh, this doesn't work just only on skeletal muscle. It can work on uh, blood vessel muscles. These are smooth muscles of the arteries in the head, so uh, they've discovered that if they can get some of this uh, neurotoxin in there, causing these muscles to relax a little bit, then some of the pain of these severe headaches can go away. Now this is supposed to be an eye twitch, but I really think he's winking at me. Fresh. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so um, eye twitches, face ticks respond very well to the use of uh, botulism neurotoxin or Botox. How about um, an overactive bladder? If we can relax some of the muscles that are causing some of the quick contractions that create um, leaks when you don't want leaks, um, that can be useful too. And this is one of the more popular uses of Botox that is of not a cosmetic purpose. The medical uses just continue. And uh, just so you know, Botox is not the only player in the game. We have Dysport and we also have Myoblock which are just different brands of uh, botulism toxin, um, and one of them might be type B. Um, sometimes after surgery, um, you'll get these painful muscle spasms because you, you just sort of mess around in there uh, wherever you've worked. And so if you can relax some of those muscle spasms, it can create a more comfortable recuperative period. So that's very common use as well. Um, writer's cramp slightly unusual, but if you've got a cramp so bad that you can't continue on with your day, um, it's very important that you release that cramp. This is something, this is uh, when you, a woman wears high heels quite a bit, some of the higher ones, especially six, eight inches, things like that. Um, at the ball of the foot, they tend to get a lot of tension and pain and it's called stiletto tarsal because uh, your tarsals are here, your metatarsals are here. So if you inject some Botox here, it can uh, help relax the muscles and relieve the pain. Um, this is an image of vocal cords right here and here. And sometimes people vo people's vocal cords can stammer or tense up or um, just sort of skip. And so if you can relax the vocal cords, uh, that could be useful, especially if someone needs to use their voice a lot. Now this is, again, we're looking at the bladder uh, where urine is stored, and in the males there is a prostate gland, and as men get older, sometimes their prostate becomes enlarged in a benign way, 
Now this prostate has a lot of extra smooth muscle and that smooth muscle could stand to be relaxed a little so they've been using Botox as a possible treatment to relax some of the pressure that's caused by having this enlarged prostate. And finally, stuttering, because um, there it tends to be sort of a musculature um, uh, interesting interface there going on with stuttering. So um, this is another way that has been used for medical purposes.